Good afternoon, everyone, and <clears throat> th thank you for being here. It's a pleasure to, uh, to be uh, moderating a session where my <coughs> childhood idol, uh, obviously I used, to, I used to ride a bike, but then when we would hear about Narayan, uh, we would get inspired. But in small towns, you're not allowed to, you know, drive so fast, but, you know, Narayan did it. I think in his backyard, father's car, where you started with or something. So we'll, we'll know all about it uh, in a bit. But now he's an entrepreneur also, and uh, uh, he's found something called DriveX, which we'll know uh, what it is about. Uh, so Narayan, thank you for uh, you know, agreeing to be here. It's an absolute honor. And the way people were taking pictures, you understand that how much we love you. So, uh, thank you, thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here amongst you all, and uh, yeah, thank you for having me here today. Thanks, Narayan. So, Narayan, to start with, uh, tell us about your venture, you know, Trivex, uh, you know, the idea, the execution. Because uh, I believe you turned it around in a very short period of time during the uh, lockdown. And uh, where is it today? Yeah, well, um, um, you know, actually, I started riding off bikes uh, as most of us do when we are, we are, we are, we are, we are you know, uh, as a teenager and even before. Um, but uh, yeah, most of my life, um, you know, uh, has been uh, motor racing. I've done, you know, all sorts of disciplines in motor racing, Formula One, World Championship, NASCAR, uh, the 24 hours of Le Mans, um, and drove for large manufacturers in Japan between 2014 and 19. And then everything came to a screeching halt, end of 2019. I won my last race in, um, in Fuji in Japan, driving for the Honda team. Um, and, um, you know, I come from a family of entrepreneurs and it was always something that I wanted to do after my racing career. And uh, it so happened, COVID happened, and, um, you, know, uh, we, uh, you know, we were all putting ideas together and, and mobility was something was in everybody's mind and um, uh, mobility which was affordable was was something everybody wanted so in august 2020 we um, uh, put together a platform called uh, drivex it's primarily uh, pre-owned two-wheelers uh, which we put it out on the rent and the subscription model and eventually uh, we started another vertical to refurb these bikes and then uh, sell them on to customers. So that's how we started off. And in the last two years, we've, uh, um, you know, as all startups uh, do, we, uh, we, you know, we pushed it, pushed along with very, very tough times. But uh, this is something I really love and I'm very passionate about, uh, well connected in the auto space, as you can imagine. Um, so we got the OEMs to back our platform and, um, you know, uh, we, we, we kind of, uh, you know, growing uh, quite uh, quite fast in this space. All right. All right. So, uh, you know, I uh, I saw a tweet by you where uh, uh, you were talking about uh, non-affordability of go karting and that uh, that is, uh, you know, an impediment for youngsters to get exposure to uh, racing. Uh, and uh, you know, I believe affordability is also the principle for your uh, startup DriveX. So, tell us the parallels that. That you've drawn here. Yeah, I want uh, you know young 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 kids who take up motor racing to be affordable. Um, but my sport uh, is quite a capital-intensive sport. But then the platform we have is all about affordable mobility. Um, and um, you know India is the largest market for two-wheelers, and the opportunity is very very large. And quality pre-owned two-wheelers um, that is quite a huge market which we are trying to address and uh, uh, we have you know we've built the ecosystem around that um, and we've got a lot of you know mainstream finance companies banks oems um, a lot of other players onto the platform so yeah we are at a you know we have a good start so right now you're only operating uh, in coimbatore and bangalore or in southern regions right? so what are your plans for uh, you know pan india plans so recently, you know, we've, uh, uh, we've expanded into other locations. Uh, primarily, we operate out of Bangalore, uh, Chennai, Madurai, Coimbatore. Uh, but now uh, we've started to expand into NCR and other parts. And, um, 
yeah, we we'd be you know pushing quite aggressively. Yeah. Okay. All right. So uh, you know, um, I'll be talking to you about you know the way you you you've spent your life. So you know, F1 cars accelerate to you know zero to. 100 miles per hour in less than three seconds or so, three seconds probably, yeah. So, you know, I believe you've applied the same speed controls to your business. So, from 47 lakh uh, revenue to, I guess, 20 crore, and now I heard you saying somewhere, you know, it would be 20x this year. So, what gives you that optimism and what are the strategy that you have adopted to do so? Yeah, as I, as I told you, you know, the um, opportunity for the, the the sector we are in it's very very large uh, you're talking about you know 11 million units uh, per annum um, so we have a large uh, you know large market out there um, and we're pretty unique in the things we are doing um, so we believe uh, the growth will also be quite substantial and um, uh, you know we have the most uh, important aspect of this is uh, to get the support of the entire ecosystem, which we have managed to do. Um, there are a lot of, uh, um, I would say, in this space, um, you know, there are a lot of other players who are, so who are there. So we're all starting off in a, um, you know, level playing field. I would, I would say, but uh, I think we have the right ingredients to, um, to, to grow this business. And as you said, uh, we've, we've had quite a lot of growth, uh, possibly because of the tailwinds of COVID as well. But um, yeah, we are quite confident that, uh, you know, we're going to keep growing as fast as I drive. <laughs> so, uh, did I, uh, you know, we had both. I mean, we had secondhand, uh, you know, online marketplaces for cars, two wheelers, and we had subscription model also, probably not for bikes, but for cars we had. You've combined the both. How do you differentiate yourself from the other uh, players that are there in the uh, So, um, in four wheelers, yeah, there, there are, you know, established players right now, many of them, in fact, and, um, um, you know, the model, end of the day, is quite similar, but... Um, then, you know, being asset light, you know, doing so many other things which uh, we were able to do, I think makes a difference, huge difference. Um, so, yeah, and uh, we've combined both the, the, the subscription and the sale model on our platform. So it gives the customer an opportunity to kind of choose the package he likes. Um, and, you know, we've had a lot of traction in tier five uh, uh, places as well. Um, it's, uh, you know, we, we found a lot of aspirations which, you know, in, in terms of biking, you know, uh, fulfilled by our platform. So we, you know, we feel that the opportunities are growing in other, um, uh, you know, uh, smaller uh, towns and cities. and. Uh, I think we'll, we'll focus there as well, quite um, uh, similar to, um, you know, tier one and, yeah. And two wheelers make more sense for uh, tier two, tier three, tier five terms, I would believe. Yeah, from a unit economics point of view, it, it makes a lot more sense for us. And uh, we've, we've, we've kind of, uh, um, you know, <clears throat> going by the way things are going, um, because of the BS6 standards which have come in, uh, the affordability for and the um, uh, the the market for these vehicles are growing. Yeah. All right. So you know you recently got invested by TVS. You know it's a leading uh, company. So uh, and you know I remember I uh, reading that one instance in your life where you could not secure enough uh, you know support to be on the F1 track. So, you know, I'm sure that you had learnings from there till now. So, you know, how does this feel? I mean, what, is, like, if you can tell us the importance of having that correct, you know, sponsor, correct, uh, you know, funding backing you at the right time to take your dreams to the next level. Yeah, trust me, sponsorship was a lot easier than finding funding for a platform. But, uh, you know, you're, you're picked, uh, you know, you've seen as a, you've seen, you, you know, they see you as a startup. And, of course, um, uh, once kind of you you they understand the business it's easy to say that you know you may you you're similar to another business of a similar kind but then once uh, the investors understood uh, what we're trying to do um, then you know it kind of the interest grew and then December we got a seed round uh, in 2021 and then we just uh, 
as you said, closed a round, uh, series A round um, in the last in the four weeks ago. So uh, we are we are really chuffed about it, and um, you know we we feel we've done the right uh, strategy. All right. So, uh, Naren, so we all know you, you know, as the first India iPhone driver, but, you know, the struggles uh, remain little known for people. You know, when I was uh, reading about you, I saw that how much you have shuttled between India, London, Japan, everywhere to, you know, establish yourself, obviously. So, you know, there would, ha there would have been losses, rejections. So, what they have, ta what have they taught you which uh, you are able to implement in your, you know, business uh, today when you're an entrepreneur? And if you can help us explain this with an anecdote, possibly. Uh, well, my success, a lot of my success um, it was because of the great team of people that were behind me. And similarly, in our business, um, a team that is supportive and a team which is, you know, very knowledgeable is what we're trying to build. And that's what will bring us the success, for sure. And um, motor, motor racing is a team sport. And similarly, you have a lot of similarities, a lot of similarities between Formula One is a very complex business. It has, you know, it is all about cutting edge technology, um, you know, agility, innovation, so on and so forth. So similarly, you know, we, we can, I can relate very closely to what I'm doing in terms of our digital platform. Um, so yeah, a lot of good learnings for, you know, it's a very, very tough world motor racing, especially Formula One. So I've learned a lot over these, through these nearly three decades of racing um, and, uh, yeah, so I think all those experiences and um, um, connect with the automobile ecosystem uh, will definitely fuel our ambitions. So tell us what you learned from your public outpouring with uh, Sebastian Vittel where you had a little accident where he was blocked or something. Well, it's, you know, he's an incredible driver, but uh, in 2012, um, I think I had a much slower car that year and he, um, I think he cut across me and he had a puncture, so in the in the rage, he said something, and uh, it became, you know, I responded towards it, and then it became a whole lot of, uh, you know, just, um, you know, BBC had headlines uh, saying whatever I said at that time, and uh, yeah, it was. Uh, I mean, he's a great driver. End of the day. Yeah. So I'm sure you won't you won't be doing that again in business now, if you know, entrepreneur as an entrepreneur, if someone comes up and says something like that, because sporting is different. Probably entrepreneurship yeah, is different. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm still learning to be an entrepreneur. You never know, but yeah, we'll keep it calm. Yeah. Okay, so we'll keep a keep a eye out for headlines, probably. All right. So, uh, you know, uh, Narayan, your father and accomplished, uh, you know, rally driver himself right, was an influence for you uh, to dream about possibly about racing. Uh, though I think he wanted you to do something else, but you cho made your choice very clear. So, you know, and do you have anyone similar uh, whom you follow in business, uh, you know, in entrepreneurship? Tell us both about your father and if there is anyone you follow in business. Yeah, um, I mean, uh, first of all, my parents, I'm talking early 90s, let me do what I wanted to do. They, you know, the only thing I asked them for was for, a, um, you know, um, uh, enrollment in a racing school in France. I did that, they did that for me, obviously, and, um, you know, the, after which I got a scholarship. And since then, I've been, you know, lucky to be supported by the Tata Group. Until today, you know, I work with them in uh, developing their road cars and so on and so forth. So. Um, I think, um, you know, Mr. Tata's vision of uh, kind of, you know, putting a Formula One driver out there um, and him being very interested in, uh, in, in cars and automobiles um, helped me, you know, and I, I, I really count myself lucky uh, to have done what I've done and, uh, yeah, for me, of course, uh, you know, my role model is Mr. Tata, um, for sure, you know. Everyone respects him. So before I uh, open the floor for questions, just one last question that I have for you is that we just saw one season of F1 in India. We had so much of investment going in, but it could not happen. Very unfortunate. What's your views? I mean, we cannot, can't we, uh, you know, host such a mega event in India? We're not uh, equipped enough? No, I, I think we can host mega events for sure. You know, cricket, you, you, you see how big they are. I mean, we are the um, you know, largest, uh, I mean, one of the best, uh, you know, events that, that go around the world. But um, 
Having said that, Formula One ran in India in 2011, 12, and 13, three years. Um, but then it was for completely other reasons that uh, it had to, you know. Board duties yeah, and all of that. Not only that, a uh, few other reasons. Yeah, obviously, yeah. <laughs> and, and so that was the end of that, unfortunately. But uh, uh, the facility is a, is a great facility. Um, and hopefully, uh, you know, something happens in the future. Yeah. All right. All right. Thank you, Narendra.